Hi, I'm Pete Wulon. I have prepared for you a series of lectures that contain the information you need to know to pass the FAA Part 107 Commercial Drone License Test. I have collected over the years a test data bank of the questions known to be on the exam. And I have gone through all the lectures and in every lecture somewhere in one of the lectures is the answer to every question that I believe is on that test. It is a long hard task to get through all this content. Blame the FAA, not me. This lecture is on loading and performance of the unmanned aircraft. We're going to discuss concepts such as center of gravity, balance and stability, performance data predictions, and aircraft loading procedures. Now when you consider loading your drone beside the uh, battery in the standard configuration, you have to consider how much weight are you loading? Does it affect the stability of your drone? How does that load put stress on the structure of your drone? And how do you mount the weight in a way that it does not affect the center of gravity or the balance of your drone? So a couple terms guaranteed that this is in the data bank. Lift. That is the upward force that holds the aircraft in the air. That is what is generated by your props. Weight is how much does your drone weigh? So lift is up, weight is down. Thrust is the force that moves the drone through the air. And drag is the friction caused by movement through air. And when they're all in equilibrium, then your drone is standing still. The FAA requires that you do a pre-flight inspection. Part of that inspection is checking that the drone is loaded properly considering the quantity of added weight and the balance of where you mount the load. If you have manufacturer's directions and limits in the pilot's operating handbook for that drone, the POH, then you are to use those specifications. If not, you as PIC are required to develop those limits. The next consideration is the effect of loading will have on performance. The more weight you add to the drone, the more it will diminish the performance of your drone. Lower battery life, lower speed, lower turns. So you have to look at what is the power consumption for that weight and what is the landing weight because your takeoff weight may be different from the landing weight. The takeoff weight is what you have to meet for that 55 to 0.55 limit, the landing weight is what you have to consider in case you safely jet, jettison your load. Or if you're using a fuel-based drone, then obviously as the fuel is consumed, the landing weight changes. If a cargo is attached to the drone, it may shift the center of gravity. This adverse balance condition or a miss of the weight distribution will affect flight characteristics. You are required to comply with the maximum cargo capacity and assure it's mounted so it does not significantly change the center of gravity. Not all manufacturers will publish a weight lifting capacity and if they don't it is the requirement to determine what that weight lifting capacity is. Are you doing anything that adds or sheds weight during the flight? What will it affect be? If it's a fuel-based drone, then obviously it's going to consume fuel and the weight will become lessened. If you are delivering safely a load to some location, 
obviously pre-delivery and post-delivery your drone will operate very differently. If the manufacturer does not provide specific weight balance data, apply general principles to determine the limits for any given flight. PIC is responsible. So the center of gravity is the point where the drone would balance if suspended from that point. Now be sure if you actually measure the center of gravity and there's techniques on the internet to do this that you have the battery in and it is configured the way you would have it on takeoff. Adding weight to the drone in a manner that does not adversely affect the center of gravity is the absolutely preferred process. So knowing the center of gravity, mounting the weight in the center of gravity will have the least impact on your drone operation. A question you might see, and I actually saw on my exam, what would the consequence of operating a SUV above its max allowable weight? Would it be able to go faster? I think not. Would it have shorter endurance? Yes. Would it increase maneuverability? No, it would not. So the answer is shorter endurance. And you might, if you put too much weight, not even have the ability to take the drone off. To assure the unmanned center of gravity limits are not exceeded, follow the aircraft loading instruction in where? Aeronautical Information Manual, Pilots Operating Handbook or UAS Manual, Aircraft Weight and Balance Handbook. Answer that question for yourself. That should be straightforward. So what affects your ability to load weight onto your drone? Remember density altitude from the weather lecture? As you get higher and higher, the air thins out and your drone just doesn't have the lift characteristics. So higher up, higher humidity, reduce lift. Now another thing you have to consider is launch surface. Where is your load mounted and does it affect how you're going to launch your bird? Surface winds, you're going to have less capacity to overcome surface winds with your drone. And are there any obstacles because of the reduced lift, the reduced climb, the reduced turning and all those factors are there any obstacles that now present a hazard to the operation of the drone? As the PIC, you must be aware that excessive weight reduces flight performance in almost every aspect. It also can compromise the structural integrity of the drone. You may also damage or compromise the structural integrity of your drone if you put too much weight on it. A summary, the effects of weight added to your drone, reduced rate of climb, reduced max altitude, shorter flight times, and reduced maneuverability. A question that you will see is the drone performance can be also decreased due to the increased in the physical loading when the aircraft operated in maneuvers other than straight and level flight. So if you make turns or quick ups and down, you're gonna add G-forces to your drone and that is going to affect its performance. Load is expressed in units of gravity or G-force. This is a table that is in this book that you see me telling you you must order all the time. So it's figure two in the book. They're going to ask you if you perform a certain, <laughs> if you're doing a 60 degree banked turn, then you are doubling the g-forces on the drone. You're placing twice the normal forces on your drone 
because the 60 degree bank has a load factor of two. So if you have, let's say, a five pound drone, it thinks it's 10 pounds when you're taking a turn at a 60 degree bank. Commercial drones are typically programmed that they cannot make maneuvers that will exceed the ability of the structure of your drone to tolerate them. There are a number of questions involving stall. Aerodynamic stall, it's caused by separation of flow. If a traditional aircraft that gets its left off the wings slows down to a certain stall speed, then it no longer develops lift and the aircraft falls out of the sky. Well, every aircraft has a critical angle and if you climb up beyond that critical angle, then you no longer get lift. Now, your lift for your drone comes from the props. And if you could climb at a certain angle, then all of a sudden the props lose their lift because you get separated flow. The air does not flow across the um, airfoil of the propeller anymore and it just loses lift. I believe that every drone is programmed so you cannot perform a maneuver intentionally that will cause a loss of lift in the aircraft. So the prop is your airfoil, it's what creates lift, and if you get it to the critical angle, the flow of the air over the wings separates as depicted in the figure above, and you lose lift capability. And without lift, gravity takes over and your drone goes down. One of the important considerations of flying a drone is we don't fly very high, or we shouldn't fly very high, less than 400 feet. We have little time to correct and try and restore normal flight. Therefore, more important that we maintain control of our vehicle and you are not operating your drone outside its normal limits. Every single slide probably has content that may show up in a question. So you need to know and understand this information. There are a ton of practice exams. There is that app that will give you practice exams. So test yourself, test yourself so you know this information cold. Now there's this another series of lectures same thing, you need to watch the entire lecture or I don't promise you that you have a high degree of learning the information if you put the commitment to it required to pass this difficult test. Thank you and I will post below as further videos become available the information and the YouTube links to those videos. Thank you, like, subscribe, comment. Anything you can do like that is going to help me with YouTube and my engagement numbers with YouTube.